Yeah, welcome back to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for today in history. And so again, we're going back to just a year ago, 2020, March 23rd. On this day in history, New York and the United States became the epicenter of the coronavirus disease in the U.S. So New York State confirmed 20,875 cases of coronavirus to become the epicenter of the disease in the US. And that was a jump of about, you know, they were recording 5,700 cases, you know, around that. And then it went up to, uh, you know, over 20,000. I mean, imagine the, the really, jump, really. really. Crazy. Yeah. And uh, the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, says the figure, uh, you know, was recorded because he had scaled up testing. According to him, he was taking this very seriously. They had increased testing to about 6,000 a day. And that's why they began to record these high figures. You know, you test more people, they are likely to know who among the population have been infected with the virus. So when New York was declared, you know, the epicenter of COVID-19 in the U.S., the governor, you know, he, he issued an emergency order recording requiring all hospitals in New York to scale up, you know, their capacity, increase their capacity to begin to treat patients who had been diagnosed with COVID-19. And uh, as of today, March 3rd, 2021, there are 29.9 million cases of coronavirus in the United States and uh, 543,000 people who had died due to the virus. Now, the U.S. is trying to make things better for, you know, the economy, for the U.S. citizens. Joe Biden has recently signed a stimulus package of $1.9 trillion, you know, uh, you know, into law. So that's uh, basically where we stand here with COVID-19 in the U.S. And this day in history, you know, New York became this epicenter of the virus in the U.S. Ooh. Ooh. So, um... <laughs> Two things I would mm -hmm. just quickly throw in, and the first one would be from Governor Cuomo. Um, and, you know, you, some of the things that you mentioned that he had to do and uh, the orders that he gave, um, he also mentioned that, of course, with more people tested, yes. you have more numbers. Um, we've heard, you know, here in Nigeria and, you know, other parts of Africa where people say, oh, well, you know, we, we, our numbers are really low. That's because you're not testing. Uh, same you're thing in Kogi State. You know, some people aren't, aren't even testing at all. Um, so, you know, for example, in Kogi State, where they claim to not, you know, be dealing with any COVID, any, you know, um, all of that. Uh, there's also um, the um, um, later governor, uh, president of uh, Tanzania, uh, who was also quoted by, you know, who was saying uh, similar stuff. So there is that. Mm -hmm. There is also the fact that Andrew Cuomo was during the lockdown and during the in the, the peak period of uh, the United States COVID nineteen um, um, era. He was one of the most popular faces, mostly because of the numbers that New York had had mm -hmm. rather, and also because of the moves that he had to make to ensure that the, the people were safe. New lockdown rules here and there, yes. and all of that. Um, unfortunately for Andrew Cuomo. The last few weeks um, have not been him being celebrated anymore. He has been um, accused of sexual assault uh, by you know, dozens of women, people that he had worked with, uh, people that, you know, who were personal assistants to him and, 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 the, and the like. So um, I'm just pointing out you know, how, how times can really change yes, between when yes. he was mm -hmm. uh, you know, a supposed hero of the COVID-19 era in New York to where he currently is having to defend himself against sexual assault um, allegations um, in the United States. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, keep, keeping it still with the COVID-19 conversation really, it Different countries have reacted differently to this. We know how Donald Trump, you know, was insistent on, you know, no face mask and, you know, COVID is fake news and all of that. But I remember when in Taiwan, you know, the health minister announced the 11th case of coronavirus. This man broke down and cried on national TV. People, I mean, that singular action won him, you know, won the hearts of lots of people. They were like, this is a country, you need to see comments on social media, this is a country that people really cared. The, gov the, the health minister was announcing the 11th case because he understood the gravity. And now there's thousands of cases. He broke down in tears. Yeah. But here, you know, I have other countries who seem to handle this with kids' gloves. So different strokes for different folks, but the fact is COVID-19 is real and we have to take precaution. Very real. You know, and of course, kudos also to people who have uh, also lived, uh, you know, who have also, um, you know, led by example and led properly. And I'm never going to forget, you know, Jacinda Ardern, uh, the New Zealand uh, 
uh, Prime Minister, mm -hmm. who has been phenomenal. And they were one of the first uh, places in the world who, uh, where they were able to get themselves you know, out of lockdown because they had completely dealt with uh, COVID-19 mm -hmm. and reduce their numbers to zero. So uh, kudos to her also. She's yes. a great example. All right. Um, on this day also, let's uh, now talk uh, today in history in the United States still. But this is not with relations to COVID-19, but it's also in 2020. Um, on this day, an American uh, by name Daniel Prude uh, died after being physically restrained by police in Rochester, New York. So uh, apparently both of our stories this morning are from New York. And, of course, um, also on this day in 2020. Um, on March 23, 2020, Daniel Prudo, a 41-year-old African-American, was killed after being physically restrained by uh, Rochester, New York, police officers. He had been suffering from a mental health episode after ingesting PCP and uh, was walking naked in the city streets. The officers put a speed hood over his head after he began spitting while they were trying to um, restrain him. They held him face down on the pavement for 2 minutes and 15 seconds, and he stopped breathing. The, of course, autopsy report ruled Prude's death a homicide and also included the contributing factors to his death uh, as excited delirium and acute intoxication by uh, Fancy Clydeen. Lord, have, have, help me in this one. Um, or PCP, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, the killing first received national attention in September 2020 when police body camera videos were released. Um, and of course, uh, that led to more and more demonstration. If you remember, the year 2020 was also a year that saw some of the biggest anti-racial segregation, um, anti-racial um, um, rioting in the United States after the death of George Floyd. So just before George Floyd's death uh, later in the year, um, um, Daniel Prude was one of the first people who was on record to have also been murdered by police. Um, and of course, he joins a long list of people who uh, led to the um, Black Lives Matter protest. You know, the Anton Sterlins, the uh, Breonna Taylors, the George Floyds, the, um, oh, I can't remember his name now, the, the little boy, the boy who was shot by George Zimmerman. So mm -hmm. there's a long list, you know, of you know African Americans who uh, suffered police brutality and, of course, lost their lives. That led to the um, Black Lives Matter protest. So it was on this day that Daniel Prude lost his life after being restrained by police in New York. Yes, I, I think there's so many lessons from this. I think I want to take the the angle of the of the drug abuse. Basically, he had taken PCP, right? You know, doctors would tell you this is a this is a drug that causes, you know, hallucinations. It's just very bad for your health. Remember, he was seen walking naked after he had taken that. So say no to drugs. It doesn't do you any good. So let's, uh, let's, let's wrap right. here on uh, Today in History. We'll take a break and return with our first big conversation. It's World Down Syndrome Day. Let's shed some light on this important issue after the break. <laughs> 